Hey guys, this is your friend Kodarjeet and today I am going to talk about inter-process communications but with a little more in-depth. I'm going to focus on IPC renderer and I'm going to talk about how IPC renderer can communicate with the main process, the IPC main through the IPC main and also with the view. The view is what's being displayed on screen. So with IPC renderer, you can talk to the main and you can talk to the view and it can be a conduit between both. You can have some data coming in from the main, flowing in all the way to the view. So we'll see that in a moment. Take a look here. On the left side, we've got different methods that IPC renderer can call to send messages to IPC main, the main process. And on the right side, we've got different events that are fired when IPC main sends a message to IPC renderer and these events can be captured to receive information from IPC main. So let's get started. I want to show you in code exactly how each of these works. All right, so here we are in a script where we've got some content. It's actually a simple page where I collect some data in a single form. It's just a standard hotel template that I found online and we've got four nice boxes. So I'm going to put some information in okay a phone number so we've got some info in and what's happening here is in index HTML this is the renderer this is the actual HTML page this information is filled in and inside of index preload we have a function called send submit which we make available to the main world right right over here which actually captures the lead in JSON format and then passes it on to the main function. In my first example, I'm using the send message and the send is a one way messaging system. This is fire and forget messaging. The message is sent to IPC main, but IPC renderer does not expect a reply back. You can send things like files that you want to write to the hard disk or you can send, send other information like database updates to the main process and if you don't need a reply back if it's just a save in save update kind of an operation then you can use IPC renderer.send and let's see in IPC main how it's consumed. In the main process you can capture the messages that IPC renderer sends to the main process through send using an IPC main.on event. And take a look, we've got a custom event sorted out here. It's called got lead. And inside of my preload, I'm using the same name for the channel for the event that I send out. Now this is called a channel. So we've got a name channel called got, got lead. And in the main process, we are capturing the same channel got lead and whatever information we are sending out in that channel. In this case, it's the lead information. It's a JSON. Uh, it's a JSON script where I have all the records that I just entered. In the main process, I, I'm actually writing this to a file. So I'm converting JSON to a string and then I'm writing to a file. So important thing to note, you can have multiple channels in your preload file, like got lead, got an update, save lead, whatever you want to call it actually. You can have multiple channels and each of the channel you can capture in your main so it can be a pretty pretty complicated affair you can create pretty complex architectures where you have multiple channels communicating with the main process and the render process sending information one way from ipc renderer to ipc main this is not a way to send the information from ipc main to ipc renderer though it's quite similar if you wanted to reverse the case what you would do here is IPC main dot send and you would call you would give it a name a new channel like lead saved like for example and this you can capture inside of IPC renderer just in the same manner you would have IPC renderer dot on and here you would capture whatever message was coming to you from IPC main. So it works both ways, but not through the same command. You can't have information coming back to you from this call of IPC render.send. It has to be through a separate 
call of IPC main dot send inside the IPC main. So it can be used both ways, but through separate functions at both ends. Let's take a look at it in action. In my main JS, I'm going to put in a breakpoint over here. And now I've got some data filled in in the browser already. You can see it. And when I click on submit, I can see that there is a render process send submit called and some message was sent through the preload. So if you come back to our code here, you can see that the event is firing. The Gottlieb channel is firing and I've got the content here. If you see lead, you can see that all my data that I just filled in is right over here too. And the file will be written. In the preload, I had this render process send submit and this was executing on the render process as we know. So when you look at it, you will see that it says render process send submit. It was captured on the render process as it should be. And back in our code, it will be captured in the main process. And when we run through this, let's go to main.js. Let us step through this code. You can see that the console.log this time in both these cases, it logged to the debugger console of your VS code. This is the node debugger attached here. And you can see the value over here. So this is the way we can bring information from IPC render to IPC main using the send method. Now let's take a look at invoke method. Now let's check out the second method to talk to the main process through the render process. It's using invoke. So let's see it in action. Let's just modify what we have right now. I'm going to rename send to invoke and then I'm going to capture the value in a variable called result. And I'm just going to console.log the result out for us to see. And here we go. So the code in IPC renderer is done with just one more small change. The invoke is actually a promise. So you will need to await it. And because you're using await, you will need to mark this as an async method. So now the changes are done. And let's go back to the main JS function. And this time, we're going to capture this channel message with handle instead of on. Everything else remains the same, pretty much the same. The only thing different is at the end, you can return a value. So I'm just going to return true now. And I'm handling it. I'm handling the channel message. In index preload, I'm using invoke. And let's see it in action. Let's see what happens. Let's run the code. Here we are. And I'm not going to put in a lot of information this time. Just going to put test, save some time. Something was on the clipboard. Click submit. And that's it. You can see the result is true. So here's what happened in this case. We grabbed the message, got lead, but this time with handle, and we were able to return a value. We returned true, which was printed in console.log that we saw. And inside the main, we were printing the lead. So you can see all the test text that I typed. It's all here. So this way, you can have two-way communications between IPC main and renderer. You can send a message to IPC main and get a reply back. And now we have here IPC renderer.sensync. And it works quite similar to IPC renderer.invoke. The only difference is instead of it being an asynchronous method, sensync is synchronous, so there is nothing to await. But since Node.js is an asynchronous platform, I don't see many cases in which you would prefer sensync to invoke. You can just call invoke, it will work just fine. It's not complicated either. So this I have not used yet, but I'm going to do it the first time now and let's see how it works. All right, let's modify our function again. So this time use send sync. I'm going to remove await and async. And instead of invoke, I will use send sync. I think everything else is going to be pretty much the same. We got to modify the main function. So instead of handle, it will be on. All this will be the same. The only difference here is instead of returning the value directly, we have to return an event value. So this should work now. Let's take another look at the function. Everything looks OK. Let's run it and let's see what happens. Got to provide some values. Test, test, 
here we go so you can see again this time we got an object so it seems that we will need to check the object and see how the value is recorded we cannot just return it directly let's do that now okay so apparently this should not be event dot value it should be event dot return value so sorry for the little error let's run it again and see what happens this time test test and a couple more tests click submit and yes you can see this time we are getting the result true and when we go back to our code here you can see that I'm using IPC main dot on to crap to trap the channel and returning the value in event dot return value again remember this will only work if you use send sync it won't work if you use send so this is how you send messages to IPC main from IPC renderer and you can get a value back if you want the other part of the IPC renderer is receiving the messages we've already discussed IPC renderer dot on it works absolutely the same as IPC main dot on instead of calling it in the main process you just call it in the render process that's all and then we also have IPC renderer dot once and if you call IPC render dot once for a channel it will trap the channel message only once and it will never trap it again so think of it like a one-time event finally if you want to remove the channel trapping if you want to remove responding to the channel in IPC renderer you can call the remove listener method and give it the channel name or you can call remove all listeners which will remove every single channel that has been that has been captured so this is how you do IPC render communications. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked it, if it was useful, you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, show me some love, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon because this is where we do real world programming every day.